Hello everyone this is part 13 of what if Naruto was abused and trained by Madara Uchiha, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, and check out the playlist, to see more comment down below, now let's start the, intro. Awagakur. The Sandime Suchikage sat behind his desk dealing with some village matters. There were important matters he had to deal with before he retired for the night. It was already night but he had to finish the work. If he did, he would just find the work waiting for him t. His train of thoughts when a messenger burst into the office, Suchikage Sama. The messenger yelled holding a report on his hand. He looked out of breath like he had been running for hours without rest. What is it? Onoki asked impatiently. I have received a report from the patrol guards at the Earth Country borders. Uchiha Naruto was seen entering the country a week ago, he left the same day. This got Onoki's complete attention, give me that report, he said. The messenger gave him the report hurriedly. He read through and asked himself a single a single question. What was he doing here? Why was I not informed of this when it happened? Onoki asked with a stern look on his old face. I don't know Suchikage Sama, I only received the report today. Anbu. Four masked man appeared before the Suchikage. Onoki handed the leader the report. Read this report and go to the general location that man was seen. Find out what he was doing. Hi, Suchikage Sama. Kanoa. Peace and calmness were in abundance within the wooden walls of the village hidden in leaves. Despite so much trouble and chaos that at times has fallen within the village, it has still somehow managed to remain standing with both its legs. It might lose its head sometimes, but they always find a new one to steer the village into the right paths. They do say that a storm comes before calm. However, people do often wish that the normal order of things would change. If so, then the calm would not lead to a storm, but are another long time of pure happiness without suffering loses and pain that life always dishes out in wide plates. Perhaps if people wished for things differently then things would work different. But often wishes and such thoughts turn out to be pointless. Because of this peace, the guards at the gate were relaxing. In peaceful times one always thinks of peaceful thoughts. Thoughts of intruders are low. Have you come into the village before? Naruto asked as the large gates of Kanoa came into view. He was asking the red-haired woman who was walking beside him. No, she gave a short reply. All I ever did with Orokimaru was move around his bases, conducting some experiments and other things, she said quietly. So Orokimaru recruited you for your special chakra and the fact that you are a scientist of some sort, it was not a question but a statement. When my mother came here, some teased her because of her red hair, dot but I doubt that will be the same with you. You might also find a number of Anbu following you. Other than that there is nothing for you to worry about. Karen looked at Naruto. Was he trying to make her comfortable because he knew she was uncomfortable with coming to the village? Was he just saying it to ease her worries? Naruto spoke again while the girl was still in her thoughts. Are you familiar with medical ninjutsu? Yes, but I'm not that good at it. I just let someone bite me to heal, Karen responded. Most of her body was covered with bite marks. Her special chakra was able to heal almost any wound. All one needed to do was to bite her. You have already told me that, Naruto said. Since you are going to be living here, I thought it would be good for you if you found something to do. You will no longer be doing experiments and researches. That being said, you might this place boring. So what do you suggest I do? Whether she was being sarcastic or not, Naruto could not really tell. Not that he cared for it anyway. For now, nothing. Don't reveal your abilities to anyone other than the one person I tell you to trust. You will live like a normal girl until I find you something to do, Naruto said going over things they did not when he had gone to pick her up at the, other hideout. Karen nodded knowing that it was all she could do, for now that it's. When they reached the gates, Naruto did not stop to speak with the guards. He just passed through with Karen following behind him. Hey stop it right there. One of the gate guards yelled as he saw the man with a red armor and a war fan strapped behind him and long blonde hair. The man was passing through the gates with red-haired woman. Naruto stopped and turned to the guard making the man uncomfortable under his impassive gaze. A flash of recognition flashed through the guard's face as he looked at Naruto's face. Oh it is you, he said nervously before turning to Karen, who is she? She is with me, 
Naruto replied keeping his gaze of the guard. Can I see her pass? She does not have any. Is there going to be a problem? Naruto stated with a tone that had the guard shift uncomfortably. In no, nothing. Let's go Karen, Naruto said turning away from the guard making him release a sigh of relief. Karen just followed Naruto from behind without a word leaving her mouth. As they began to walk away from the guards making it into the streets, they attracted some attention from the villagers. Naruto sighed seeing the commotion his presence was making. There are about three squads, which I believe are Anbu that are watching us, Karen said to Naruto. The girl was a top sensor. He had not sensed them all. So far, he had only sensed a single squad. Naruto touched Karen on her shoulder and they disappeared in a swirl of flames. Naruto's house. They appeared inside of Naruto's house within the Shinobi district. Karen found herself admiring the place despite the obviousness that no one had been living in here for some time. This is my house, Naruto said. It will be yours from now on. I would have you live with me at the Uchiha compound, but I get the feeling that you are not comfortable around me. So until you get used to my presence this will be your house. Thanks, Karen found herself saying those words. They just escaped. Naruto said nothing about that. You are free to do anything you want. Just keep a low profile, he said. But for now stay here until I return. Where are you going? I have to see Sasuke, and I believe that not long soon it will be sending her Anbu after me, Naruto stated leaving the Uzumaki girl alone at the apartment. Uchiha Compound Naruto arrived at the Uchiha Compound quickly and walked within the empty streets that used to be full of children running about their happiness. There seemed to be no one. Well that was to be expected given that only Sasuke was currently living within the home of the Uchihas. He went to the house he knew to be the former head clan's house which was now Sasuke's. The house was clean Sasuke was taking good care of it. He went upstairs to search for a room he would use. Finding it, Naruto unstrapped his gun by and left the house off to the training ground within the compound. He sensed the other Uchiha there along with someone. Sasuke was busy sparring with his sensei, Kakashi. Both had their Sharingans activated as they battled. Sasuke was fast. His speed was admirable. Kakashi was also fast but nowhere near as fast as his student was. However, Kakashi had experience with him. The man has been fighting since the Third Shinobi World War. It was understandable that he would have more experience in battle than Sasuke. Naruto was impressed with both their improvements. Even so with Kakashi's use of the Sharingan. Despite not being an Uchiha, he was using the Dujutsu like an Uchiha. There was also the fact that he had the Mangeku. Still, he was not able to use all of the Mangeku's abilities because of his lack of Uchiha blood. As far as Naruto knew, Kakashi was only able to use Kamui, which was special to Obito's eyes. The two finally noticed Naruto and stopped their sparring session. They walked towards Naruto looking heavily tired. It seemed that they had been sparring for quite some time now. It was a surprise to Naruto seeing Kakashi fight with someone when he was not doing a mission. Perhaps he should have had Zetsu spy on their training trip to see how well they were training. As far as his eyes could see, Sasuke was not the only one who changed. Kakashi was the first to speak, Naruto. It's good to see that you have returned in one piece, the copy ninja said giving Naruto one of his iconic eye smiles. Naruto said nothing at the man's words. Kakashi spoke, when did you return? A few minutes ago, Naruto responded. Even you changed. Well I suppose if Sasuke was able to change then everything is possible, he commented on both the Sharingan uses change. Sasuke felt insulted by what Naruto had said. What is that supposed to mean? He looked like his old self when he asked the question. Oh, you still possess that old spark it seems, Naruto said his lips forming a small smile. Old habits never die, Kakashi said. Naruto, he said his expression changing. Can I talk to you? Dot say maybe tomorrow. Naruto looked at Kakashi with a raised brow, but said nothing. He only shrugged. I will see you tomorrow Sasuke, Kakashi said and disappeared in a puff of smoke. Naruto turned around to the house with Sasuke following him. When they arrived, Naruto went outside to the garden while Sasuke went to take a shower. He had been training, it was only natural that he take a shower first before getting down to business with Naruto. I did not think that you would be returning soon, Sasuke said walking towards the garden where Naruto was sitting comfortably in silence. I did what I had to do faster than first thought, Naruto replied. 
At first he had not planned to come back to Kanoa quickly as he had now. He was in no hurry to return to the village. But things do change, and he was forced to hurry up his schedule. Where did you go to after leaving the Mist Village anyway? Sasuke asked genially curious as he sat down beside Naruto. Earth Country, Naruto replied calmly. Sasuke from now on would be his partner. He would know some of the things that he will be doing. There was no need for him to keep his fellow Uchiha in the dark about some things. You would go to that country knowing that a Wagako hates Kanoa. I doubt if they see a Kanoa shinobi in their country they would let him go without trying to take him down. Naruto shrugged. My target was at the country. And besides I would have taken care of any nuisance that would have attempted to fight me, he said. Who was your target? Since Naruto seemed to be talking to him freely and even bothering to answer his questions, he decided to just go with the flow. Orokimaru. Did you get him this time? He knew that it was not the first time that Naruto had gone after Orokimaru. The first time it was obvious that Orokimaru had gotten away as Naruto ended up destroying several of Orokimaru's hideouts. Yes, that meant that the snake Sanon was dead. I doubt that you were after him simply because he was a Kanoa traitor, Sasuke paused for a moment trying to see if Naruto was getting annoyed with his questions. What did he do to you? Nothing, Naruto replied. He just had something that belonged to me. Now Sasuke was not going to ask what it was that Orokimaru had which belonged to Naruto. If Naruto had chosen to say, something, then it was not for him to know. Are you satisfied? Naruto asked Sasuke who nodded. Good, then we can get on to business. Sasuke sighed. Not that I am not happy to discuss the Uchiha clan with you, but don't you think that you should go and rest? You just came back today and you look a little pale, some might not be able to notice it as one could never tell unless they had seen Naruto up close during his genin days and before he returned to Kanoa. I'm fine, Naruto said. It's important that we discuss these things before the next council meeting. One of us will have to take the Uchiha clan head seat at the meeting. Sasuke nodded, is it safe to talk out here? Someone might be listening. It's safe. No one is within the compound. I lost the Anbu that had been following me when I went to my house. But it's only a matter of time before they find me again. Sasuke nodded again. I made the requests about every property that belonged to our clan. The council had been refusing at first, but the Hokage and I convinced them, he said with a smile. Naruto nodded with a small smile. He had not thought that soon it would against the council in the matter. Well that is good. So our library is operating. Yes. I had some genins put everything to place. All that is left is to put a barrier so that not everyone can get in. That sounds good. I would hate it if someone were to sneak into our library. How long did it take for them to give you the scrolls? Naruto asked as a thought entered his mind. About a week, Sasuke replied looking at Naruto trying to see if there was something wrong. Before I left I knew where the scrolls were located. They were not in the village's library. The elders never thought that they would be forced to return them. I know Danzu made copies of particular scrolls. The elders did not as they had the originals in their possession. So I am guessing that with the time it took them to give you the scrolls, they were making copies. What is in those scrolls that they had to keep them for their own use? Did you ever use the library before the massacre? Sasuke shook his head no. There are some secrets that were put into the library by the previous head clan before your father. Secrets about our dujutsu, how it's matured and some abilities of the mangeku, clan history and other things. I thought everything about the mangeku was at the Naka shrine. Yes everything is in the shrine. But a few details were put in the library. The scrolls don't tell how the mangeku is activated though. There are just some abilities, some forbidden that were recorded. These abilities of the mangeku were used before Kanoa was even founded. I did not. Sasuke trailed off when Naruto raised up his hand. A second later, an Anbu dropped next to the two Uchihas. Uchiha Naruto, Hokage Sama is requesting your presence now. Naruto looked at Sasuke, I will come and pick you up after the meeting, he said not acknowledging the Anbu. Uchi, Naruto cut of the Anbu with an even tone. I heard you, he said and disappeared. The Anbu did the same. Hokage office. As soon as Naruto appeared inside Sunid's office, he found himself staring at the eyes of Jiraiya and the blonde Hokage. They seemed to have been waiting for him patiently for quite some time. Perhaps Sunid had thought that as soon as he entered the village he would be knocking at her door reporting that he had returned, home. 
Foolish expectations. He would never have done that. Perhaps after he had discussed everything with Sasuke he would have. Nevertheless, he had been expecting her to call him as soon as she got tired of waiting. Naruto knew that Sunid was a very impatient woman. However, not all Senjus were impatient as far as history said. Perhaps it came from the fact that her grandfather spoiled her too much while she grew up. She was and is used to always get what she wanted. It had to have been wonderful living being the first grandchild of the Shodai Hokage. Well that was why they called her princess anyway. Both former teammates were no doubt going to be asking him many questions. Depending on the kind of questions, they asked he would give answers. In addition, today he had decided to be, gracious, and answer some questions. Well the questions he felt were necessary to be answered. Things he liked to keep to himself, he would keep. How nice of you to finally come here, the remark sounded sarcastic. Naruto either ignored it or just did not catch it because his face stayed impassive, as always. An Anbu came by and said you requested my presence, Naruto said after some silence. What is it? Hokage Sama. Nope. He was never going to say it again, it did not feel right at all. It felt wrong. Soon it seemed to smirk in victory as Naruto called her properly. It was for the first time he had actually done that. She enjoyed the look on his face when, Hokage Sama, came out of his mouth. Jiraiya had other ideas though, why does she have to call with respect only? While I Jiraiya the toad sage is called often with disrespect, now he was just whining like a child who was robbed of her lollipop. Naruto did not comment. Such words from a man like Jiraiya did not need his comment. Not even a thought. His eyes only looked at Sunid. Apparently, Sunid did not have the same thoughts as Naruto. That is because you act like a child you damn pervert. She said her voice up to make her point clear. Jiraiya seemed, hurt, by her words. Well anyway legs get back to business, Sunid said taking her eyes off Jiraiya to Naruto who was standing calmly in front of her desk. To answer your question Naruto, I did send an anbu after you. As to why, the reason should be obvious, Sunid said speaking like a commander. Her tone seemed to get Jiraiya off his childish antics as he adopted a serious expression on his face. Apparently, that was the only word that left Naruto's mouth. First, I would like to say that, no tell you that you should not do what you did when you left the village. Nobody leaves the village without my command. I am the leader of this village and you will not do see you please, is that clear? Sunid spoke in a tone full of power and authority, which were complemented by her fierce and sharp look. Anybody under her gaze would have nodded and kneeled before making assurances that it would not happen again. But not Naruto, he was unlike anybody. Yes, he was going to be, gracious, but that did not mean she could boss him around. She was weaker than him. Old for that matter. He could see her wrinkled skin that showed her true age. Perhaps he would follow some of her orders but not every one of it. He was not going to say he would follow her every word or not. Therefore, he chose not to say anything. Sunid took the silence as a yes. Her message was clear enough. I would have been asking for the results of your training. However, from the reports in Kirigakur, I no longer need that, she said. I have a question though. Where were you before you decided to run after Orokimaru? At a safe place, Naruto replied shortly. It appears that way, Jiraiya intervened. But that was not the question. I searched everywhere for you but did not find you. That is not true. Ha. Huh. You said you searched, everywhere. That is not true. If you did not find me then you clearly did not search everywhere, as I was somewhere, now Naruto's eyes were at the perverted Sanin as he replied to the question. Don't try to play smart with me Naruto. Answer the question. Naruto did not answer. His eyes went back to Sunid. He caught her with an amused expression on her face. She seemed to enjoy seeing Jiraiya being, schooled. Sunid cleared her throat and banished the amusement in her face. As Naruto has put it, you did not search everywhere Jiraiya. Hey who are you with on this? Jiraiya asked Sunid sounding, hurt, again that she would pick Naruto's side over his. Regardless, that does not answer the question. The question remains, where were you Naruto? Is this question pressed because I can simply disappear from the face of the world without anyone knowing my whereabouts? Is it because Jiraiya as renowned spy master who has connections almost everywhere failed to find me? Naruto questioned the two Sanans in front of him. Perhaps, Sunid said before Jiraiya could say anything. Now are you going to answer the question? She asked with narrowed eyes. No, it was short and clear. 
Why? Jiraiya this time beat Suna to speak. Do you have something to hide? A small smile flicked through Naruto's face before it quickly disappeared like it was never there. Always suspicious, Jiraiya, there was a difference in the tone he used. Neither Jiraiya nor Sunid could quite define it. You have given me enough reasons to be, Jiraiya defended himself. That I have, Naruto admitted. Jiraiya, do you remember the time you asked me how I was an Uchiha as per your belief neither of my parents were Uchihas? Yes, do you still remember the answer I gave you? Jiraiya frowned but replied nonetheless, you told me to search for answers myself. Until I had found something I could come back to you and you give me the answers. Sunid now found herself questioning that. She was also curious as to how Naruto was in Uchiha. However, that did not banish the question, why would Naruto have Jiraiya dig for information? Unless. She smiled at the thought and looked at Jiraiya. Jiraiya you fool, he told you to search for something because he knew you would not find anything. Sunid thought. What does that have to do with anything? Both of you are suspicious of me. You don't trust me. I have not given you any reason to. If you think I am plotting something against the village, use your spy network to verify that. Perhaps this time you might find something. If you do find something come and confront me about it, he did not care if they trusted him or now. But his saying would make things better for him. And besides, things would be interesting if they were stayed the way they were. He would get bored if he did not stir things to become interesting. Jiraiya frowned. Naruto was obviously telling him that because he knew all his searches would lead to nothing. There were people who covered their tracks perfectly. Like Danzu. He could not find a shred of evidence that would put the old warhawk behind bars even when he knew that the old man was into things that would have him executed. With Naruto he was only suspicious, but he did not know for sure. His gut told me that Naruto was not plotting something against the village, but Naruto's secretive ways did not help. Sunid sighed. Well it appears that Naruto was not going to answer the question. And they could not force him to answer. She was glad that Jiraiya had realized that Naruto was telling him to search because he knew or was positive that he would not find anything. That is if the frown on his face did not suggest anything. Well since you are obviously not going to answer that question. Let's move on to your actions of the past months. Naruto waited for the question. Why were you after Orokimaru? He had a girl that should not be with him, Naruto responded. Well that was not entirely true. He was after Orokimaru for the Shinigami mask, and Karen. However, he could have gotten Karen without going after Orokimaru. He just had to find the hideout she was being kept. What girl? Jiraiya asked. His face had mixed emotions. Naruto never bothered to study them. Uzumaki girl. You must know already that I came back with a young woman. Sunid nodded. A report from the gate guards had told her so, what's special about her? Is it not that obvious? Jiraiya spoke the obviousness Naruto was speaking of. She is an Uzumaki. She is a member of his mother's clan. Perhaps a full-blooded Uzumaki unlike him. Sunid nodded now in understanding. But the question is, why could Orokimaru keep her? She was a scientist like him, Naruto decided to answer that question to get him off Karen's back. He knew that they would send some people to shadow her movements inside the village if they did not get anything. That much was enough. None of her abilities needed to be revealed. So she conducted experiments with Orokimaru, Sunid concluded. Naruto said nothing. There was nothing to be said. Where is Orokimaru anyway? I took care of him, Naruto replied. You killed him. Naruto nodded. Do you have his head to prove that? No. Naruto said. I burned every part of his body, he said it like it was nothing serious. Sunid did not want to ask anything further on that. Moving on to your actions in Kiri, which you have become famously known for. Again, Naruto waited for a question or anything. I have to say that what you did was reckless and could have gotten you killed, Sunid said sternly but then smiled. Regardless, it seems that your actions might have brought Kanoa an ally. I got a message from the god I Mizukage a few days ago, she will be coming here in a few days to talk about an alliance. Naruto said nothing. He had expected that much. However, he had thought she would wait until Kiri recovered. That is if unless she wishes for help. Another thing we need to talk about is the Akatsuki, Jiraiya said. How much do you know about them? All that I need to know about them, Naruto responded coolly. Naruto, this is serious. Akatsuki pose a serious danger not just to Jinchurikis but the whole elemental nations. 
Naruto sighed crossing his hands on his chest. That was according to Jiraiya. He would deal with Nagato and Obito in due time. What would you do if I gave you info about them? I would share it with other villagers so that they can be prepared, Jiraiya said with conviction. So many people like doing noble things but lack the power and the resources to do so, such a pity, Naruto said to himself. Iwa don't care about their Jinchuriki. And I doubt they would even listen to you. Taki also don't care. Kumo will probably laugh at you since the rakage believes he can withstand anything, arrogant fool, he thought aloud. Both Sunid and Jiraiya heard him but neither were willing to comment. Suna will accept you and Kiri have lost both its Jinchurikis. Sunid and Jiraiya were impressed. So you know where all Jinchurikis are located, Jiraiya said. Naruto said nothing. Jiraiya had not asked anything. What he had said was a statement of fact. Regardless of that, I will give you profiles of all Akatsuki members, minus the leaders of course. You know all of them. I have been searching for years and have not found out all of their members. Jiraiya said clearly surprised that Naruto had information that he had. Jiraiya, by now you must have probably gotten a wind of where the leader of Akatsuki is located. Yes, I was planning to check on that lead in a week. Jiraiya said proudly. Proud that he had found where the leader of Akatsuki was located. Don't go there. He will kill you, Naruto stated. What? If you enter a Megacore, the leader of Akatsuki will kill you. How do you know that? He defeated Hanzu. The man who you Sanon could not defeat in your prime, the man who gave you that title. And he did it so rather easily. Both Sanons were shocked. Just how strong could the man be if he could defeat Hanzu the Salamander easily? Another question. How does Naruto know all this? If he is that strong then I have more reasons to go there. If you wish to die then go, dot it's your funeral. Last time I heard anything about Am was that the village was locked in a civil war. Lately no spy goes in and comes out of the village. How do you know all that Naruto? Sunad asked saving Jiraiya from Naruto. Naruto chose to ignore the question. Now that is all done with. I have a request. That caught both Sanon's attention, which is. I need to have the same rights as Jiraiya. What? Naruto looked at the blonde Hokage blankly. Why? I need to be able to come in and out the village without much trouble. I also need to get into other villages without too much questions. Why? That annoyed Naruto. It became clear in his face. Same reasons as Jiraiya. Jiraiya is a Sanon. He also brings valuable intel to the village. I am stronger than Jiraiya and I was just giving you intel that he could not get hold of. Sunad blinked. She was certainly not expecting him to say that. Is it perhaps a question of loyalty? Or are you afraid of what the elders might say? Sunad scoffed at Naruto's last words. I will discuss it with Jiraiya first, she said eyeing her former teammate who nodded. I believe that is all, Naruto said before looking at Jiraiya. Jiraiya before you get any ideas. I was not telling you to stay away from Am, cause I would be saddened by your deaths. Your death would not just look good to Kanoa's power. Minato, the Sandime have all died. If you also died, Kanoa would be seen as in a weakened state. Although it would be amusing to see some villagers try to take advantage of that situation, I would rather it did not happen. Personally, I don't care if you die or live. With that he disappeared the same way as he appeared, in a swirl of flames. Jiraiya was saddened by Naruto's words. However, it quickly disappeared as he spoke. Damn I have to ask him to teach me that. Naruto's house. After the meeting at the Hokage's office, Naruto had gone back to the Uchiha compound. He found Sasuke reading something. He did not bother to ask as it was not his concern and quite frankly he did not care. Still, he was surprised to find Sasuke reading something. He had not thought that Sasuke would actually be into literature. Perhaps it came with the change. He did not say much to the Uchiha. He took him to his place. To avoid much causing a commotion they used Naruto's own unique shunshin to teleport to his house which was now Karen's. The said girl was seated with a bored look at the sitting room. She seemed bored, not that she could be blamed. This place is much safer to talk than the compound. Nevertheless, I will set up the protection as soon as I get time, Naruto said to Sasuke as they walked towards Karen. Sasuke nodded. I have heard Kakashi say that it was impossible even for ANBUs to break inside this place, he said. Kakashi had informed him of the time Kanoa had been wary of Naruto and had been watching him over time. 
They tried to get into his house but only to find that they could not because the house was heavily protected with barrier seals. I had set up barriers to avoid people coming in here to do what they pleased. Jiraiya broke in once though. But I updated the security. In addition, that time my skills with barriers was not of the highest level, Naruto explained to the other Uchiha. Karen had been acting like she was not seeing them. Sasuke, this is Uzumaki Karen, Naruto introduced the girl to Sasuke. Uchiha Sasuke, he introduced himself to the red-haired girl who flustered a bit seeing his face. Sasuke sat down along with Naruto. Karen, this one you can trust, Naruto said. Sasuke could be trusted. He had no doubt that Sasuke would spill anything he tells him to anyone. If there was anything, Sasuke knew what not to say and what not to be said. If Sasuke was given a choice like Itachi's, he could have chosen his clan other than Kanoa. So, Naruto knew that he would not tell anyone anything that they talked about. Not that Naruto was going to tell Sasuke everything. Karen nodded with a small smile. Naruto focused on Sasuke, before the Anbu came I was telling you about some of the Uchiha clan secrets within the scrolls that the elders had taken. But the secrets in those scrolls are nothing that could cause serious dangers. As you know most valuable information is at the Naka Shrine. Sasuke nodded, still, you did say that there were some forbidden techniques in those scrolls. We cannot have none Uchihas have that kind of information. I agree, Naruto said. Which is why in the next council meeting I will tell the elders to burn every scroll they have since they are basically in possession of Uchiha property unlawfully. You are the one to talk about being unlawful. You do what you please, Sasuke said with a smile making Naruto seem like a hypocrite. Karen nodded, from what that, friend, of yours told me about you, you don't do anything lawfully unless it is your own laws, she added. You are making me seem like a hypocrite, Naruto said with an amused expression. It amused him seeing how Sasuke and Karen were quick to point out that. But they were wrong about something. While it may be true that I do what I please, or operate by my own laws. I do not go around taking things that do not belong to me. The elders on the other hand have taken things that do not belong to them. And I always take back what belongs to me, lawfully or unlawfully. Sasuke nodded. Well they had to take back what they belonged to their clan. They could not have clan secrets becoming public knowledge, regardless of how minor they might be. About restoring the clan. Naruto looked at Sasuke with a raised brow. Are you ready to start doing that? Have you already found suitable females for that? Well, uh, no, Sasuke replied nervously. Hey, you are making it sound like you just want women to use them so you can recreate your clan, Karen interjected standing in for her kind. You can't do something like that. Sasuke if you want to restore your clan you have to do it with someone you love. From what I have heard from his, friend, she said pointing at Naruto. I don't think he can understand that. I don't think he even understands love between a man and a woman. Naruto simply raised a brow at the girl's words, but refrained from commenting. Sasuke have you ever been in love? No, Sasuke replied shortly. Ha, huh. he has never been interested in females before. All he cared about was his, ambition, Naruto spoke for Sasuke. You are the one to speak. I have never seen you interested in a girl before. All the girls that showed an interest in you during out time at Team 7 you simply looked at them with disinterest and called them annoyances. Sasuke shot back defending himself. Karen found herself laughing. How long have you two been like this? Ha, huh, that was Sasuke. How long have you two been you know like friends? Karen asked again. To tell you the truth I never liked him a few years ago. In fact I hated him. He also told me he hated me. But that all changed when I found out he was part of my clan. But when I came here to talk to him he shot me down. Sasuke paused for a moment. Well we have never really gotten along. You can say that we only became civil a few weeks ago. But that was also small talk inside a genjutsu. Really. Disbelief was clear in Karen's voice. Again. Naruto said nothing. His expression had now returned to what it always was. Yes, Sasuke emphasized with a nod. But you act like you have been friends for quite some time now. Naruto had never noticed that little fact. Nevertheless, he shoved it at the back of his head. It was not important. As you were saying Sasuke, restoring the clan, that can be discussed after we have dealt with a few issues. Karen sighed. Naruto was no fun. At least his white, friend, was fun when he was not annoying her. 
There are just the two of us but it matters not. We are the last members of the Uchiha clan. Someone has to take the clan head seat at the next council meeting, Naruto said. Sasuke nodded, my father was the previous head clan, so the title should be inherited by me. But after dealing with those council once, I don't think I can deal with them again. You are more suited to deal with them, he suggested. Naruto nodded. It did not matter to him who took the seat. He knew that despite Sasuke having changed, he was not the one to be controlled by someone. He would just make sure that the other Uchiha was not made an easy target for manipulation. Fine, he said. What are you going to be doing? That is what I wanted to talk to you about, Sasuke said a little a bit serious. Not that the previous talk was not serious. As you know the Uchiha founded the Kanoa military police force, which operated as a judicial organization within the village. After the massacre, the organization became dead as it consisted mostly of Uchiha. I wanted to have the organization rebuild it and head it. Naruto was thoughtful for a moment before speaking. The Uchiha did not but rather Senju Tobarama found it. He was the one who created it and handed it to the Uchiha clan, Naruto corrected Sasuke. Regardless, this would be a good opportunity for you to know everything that happens to Kanoa. Yes, the council just has to approve it, Sasuke stated. We will convince them to approve it, Naruto said. But you do know that you cannot run the military force without members. Yes, I was thinking of asking the Hokage to give me few shinobis for the military force, after we have convinced the council to approve it. I doubt that soon it will give you anyone strong unless they volunteer. She will probably give you genins and a few weak chunins, Naruto stated. Well, it does not matter. They can always be trained. You have thought this through, Naruto said looking straight at Sasuke. I have, the Uchiha admitted. I will help you with the training, Naruto offered earning a nod from Sasuke. I believe that is all. You can go, I have a few things to discuss with Karen. Sasuke looked at Karen for a moment before shrugging. He walked away from the duo without another word. Naruto turned to Karen, I have already discussed with you why I brought you here and why I want you to live, he said. And you understood my reasons. Yes, though I never asked for this. Karen finished the last part in a whisper. It did does not matter. What matters is that I want you to be safe and secured. You have never trained to be a shinobi, despite your special chakra, sensory ability and uzumaki genes. Karen nodded nervously under his gaze. I will have to change that, Naruto said to the girl. What? You want me to train? No way. Karen, Naruto said calmly to the girl who was now standing on her feet glaring at him. You have the stamina to perform your angry outbursts and the Uzumaki blood in you. You were also able to tear apart a white Zetsu clone in one of your episodes. If you diverted all that energy into training, you could have enough to defend yourself. I can defend myself just the way I am. Can you? You might be able to sense enemies coming towards you, dot but it will not always be the case. You cannot always outrun you enemies. Karen sighed and sat down. Naruto was a prime example of that. He had caught her even when she knew that he was coming after her. I cannot always protect you. I have no illusions about that. I know that I cannot be everywhere. That is why I need you to be strong enough to at least hold off your enemies until I can be able to get to you if the situation calls for it. Karen said nothing. You have always been sheltered within Orokimaru's hideout. Never knowing what it is like to defend yourself. My mother was a full-blooded Uzumaki like you. But she was strong, and capable of handling herself well. She was very good with seals, even taught Yondime Hokage some of her seals. Naruto paused for a moment. I want you to carry that Uzumaki name proudly. I want you to be a real Uzumaki. Again, Karen sighed, but this time in defeat. Fine, she said. Good, I will begin your training in a few days after I have claimed my inheritance. Karen decided not to ask what his inheritance was. What exactly are you going to teach me? Basics in Fuinjutsu. The rest you will learn for yourself. Also basic Taijutsu. You will also have find a way to use your special chakra without having someone to bite you. Karen sighed in relief. At least it was not anything more damaging to her body. What was she saying? A part of her body was covered with bite marks. Naruto stood up from his seat. You should go and get some food before the sun sets. And also some new clothing. Burn everything in my room. I won't have any use for anything there. I don't even know where to buy the food. Naruto shrugged. 
Just walk around you will find what you need. It will be a good experience for you as well. Naruto walked towards the bathroom. The teleportation seals he used to teleport to the hideout was still in place. He would have to remove it since he now no longer would be using it since he won't living in the house. He removed it and walked away. Soon he would have to learn a teleportation jutsu. It would make things easy for him to get where he wants without having to travel long distances not that he minded anyway. The jutsu would just enable him to get to the hideout, Oto without a hustle. Naruto left Karen as he went back to the Uchiha compound. Later that day, Yugao was nervous. She had heard that Naruto had come back at the village. She wanted to see him. Kakashi had been kind enough to tell her that he had seen the blonde at the Uchiha compound. Even at the Anbu HQ, they were also talking about his return. She had been told that he had returned for a few hours now. She did not know what she would say to him. What could she say? Hey Naruto, I have missed you and I just wanted to see how you were doing. Hey Naruto, I have been thinking about you ever since you decided to leave me and go on your ways. She could not possibly say something like that. Hence for the past two hours she had been thinking of the words she would have to say him when she shows up at his door. She could imagine how he would react. He would simply stare at her with a raised brow. That would make things uncomfortable for her. Still over the past two hours, she had found nothing and decided to just go. She went to his house but did not find him. She was somewhat surprised to see a red-haired young woman at his house. Thoughts had run through her head when she saw the girl. But she got over them and politely asked where Naruto was, and the girl told her that he was at the Uchiha compound. With that, she quickly excused herself. That was why she was now within the Uchiha residence. Yugao stood at the only house she had sent chakra signature within the compound. Sighing nervously, she knocked at the door. She only did it once, as her hands felt weak to do so again. If no one was going to open it she would leave and come back another day. A minute later, the doors opened, Yugao san Sasuke said looking at the woman in front of him. Hello Sasuke, Yugao greeted with some confidence. Is Naruto in here? I went to his house and was told he was here. He is here, Sasuke said. Come in, I will call him. No, I'm not here to stay long. I will be fine here, she said. Sasuke shrugged and walked away from her. A few minutes later, Yugao felt heavy footsteps coming downwards, as if the person was climbing down the stairs. She felt as though each footstep was in motion with her heartbeat. Just as she had thought, Naruto came to the door and looked at her with a raised brow. It was hidden within his hair, but Yugao knew how his expression looked like when his eyebrows were raised. His hypnotizing eyes seemed to gain a glint of redness with the dark night. Surprisingly he was still wearing his armor. Yugao. Though he did not say it. He was asking her what she wanted. Yugao knew that. Hello Naruto, she managed to say without stuttering. She had gathered her strength now. I was just checking on you. Naruto simply nodded. She had expected that much from him and nothing else. But she was surprised when he spoke next. It is good to see that you are well, he said. Whether he was just saying it one could not really tell because his expression was still impassive never showing that he was indeed pleased. However, Yugao knew too well. Naruto never thinks just for the sake of saying them. The knowledge caused her to smile slightly forgetting that Naruto was still in front of her. She was lucky though, as Naruto saw her smile to her own thoughts and decided not to comment on it. Well anyway, I was wondering if we could get something to eat tomorrow night, she said it with as much confidence as she could master. Naruto seemed to think of it before replying. Sure, he said, he might as well go since she had asked. There was no harm to be done. Yugao was surprised that he had yes. She was even more surprised by the little smile he had on his face. She had not seen it before. It was new. She liked it on his face. The thoughts made the heat on her cheeks rise up a little. She turned around, I will see you tomorrow then, she said sounding a little happy. She was about to leave but then stopped and turned around to face Naruto. Please don't be wearing your armor, she said with a smile before disappearing but not before she saw the amused glint in Naruto's face. Naruto closed the door. He took a few steps before stopping as Sasuke spoke, so you are going on a date tomorrow, he managed to keep a straight face when he said that. Naruto looked at Sasuke, what gave you that idea? Sasuke raised the book on his hand letting Naruto see the cover page. From the title on the cover page, Naruto knew what the book was. 
perhaps, he said quietly and went back upstairs. Somewhere deep within Kanoa. So it is true, one of the two people said walking towards an elderly man sitting on a throne. Yes, the man said looking at the two in front of him. I hear he came back with a red-haired woman, the one that spoke now, was clear that it was an elderly woman. That is also true, the man sitting on a throne, said. My root has informed me that she was working with Orokimaru. He must have picked her up when he destroyed Orokimaru's bases, about two months ago. Yes, then that must mean that there is something special from about her, if Orokimaru kept her. It would also explain why he took her. The others nodded. No doubt he won't tell anyone about it. He also won't allow her to be touched. If we try to use force, we will just be sending out agents to deaths. Yes, the elder on the throne said. He knows that we won't move against her using our own ways. That is why he has even allowed her to stay alone. Then we will have to use our power to get her. I have already planned something. There was silence. You both know that there is no way that Sasuke knew about the scrolls. Which means, that he must have told him when they met in Kiri, the others nodded. He knows too much. I once spoke to him before he left and he did not hide the fact that he knew some things he is not supposed to know. You also are aware that he knows about the Uchiha massacre. Yes, he made it clear that he knew in our last council meeting. He is becoming a threat, and he is still not trustworthy. Should he prove to be unmanageable like he has, we have to deal with him. That will be it for this video if you want more comment down below, like, subscribe. And see you guys later.